Doc, good morning. How are you? Happy New Year, fellas. Happy How New are you? Happy uh, 24. We are doing well. Yeah, we're, we're undefeated. Yep, so <laughs> far. Good. Yep, it's very good. early, but undefeated. Yeah. We'll, we will take that. So <laughs> so during uh, the Niners-Commanders game over the weekend, I was watching it with my youngest son, and he was mm-hmm. he was groaning at what was happening on the TV you know, as they were heading toward another loss. And I, I turned to him and I said, I said, Brendan, this is this is a win. <laughs> they're they're setting up for the number two or number three pick in the draft. Like you you can't win, you can't root for meaningless wins at the end of the season and jeopardize your spot to pick a potential difference maker at quarterback in the upcoming twenty twenty four NFL draft. I said, Congrats, Brendan. The commanders won by losing. That's yep. kind of the, the, the attitude that I've had to take. And I know, Doc, that you've been conflicted with it. We've talked with you about You're it. Sick. Yeah, it's, but it, it's it, weird it and twisted. It could be right mm-hmm. if they don't blow the pick. Right. And if the kid they pick is a winner, right. not a loser. So there's no real way to say one way is right or the other is wrong. You just, what do you feel? What's your gut tell you? At this point, I say you have to select a quarterback if you, the new people that come in, deem that person is worthy. Right. And then when you do that, it's not a guarantee. Right. No, you're right. But, um, and we were talking about this as well, Doc. I mean, Ron Rivera takes over this team four years ago. They had the number two yeah. pick in the draft. Yeah. He leaves four years later with a number two pick in the draft. Yeah. I mean, it's just been an epic failure all the way around. And, you know, Terry McLaurin was talking about the uh, the 49ers culture after the 27-10 loss. Mm. And he had some interesting comments. Um you know, he seemed like he was kind of jealous of, of how those guys play for each other. And, uh, and again, it's, it's easy to say that when you're having such a bad year. But, man, the, the, the overall culture with Ron and this team has been an F, and it really has. And it's, it's kind of sad. And it's even worse that he could be hired again. It's not like this league wouldn't recycle him again. They do, they do it all the time. We're acting like this is a train wreck that we've never seen before. We've seen it here several times. Mm -hmm. And the reality of it is that we're not the only people stuck on stupid in this league. And you were talking about Tepper, and I was listening this morning to you guys, and it's the way it is. And so you don't care if it's not your team. I'm still hanging on to the first half that I was like, wow, I got a chance to see some new blood. Mm Mm-hmm. And guys like Lucas and Scott, uh, you know, Gates actually had, I think, an entire game. We were, like, competent against an excellent team. And I was like, okay, now that we can we can work with a little bit. <laughs> Seeing B-Rob slashing and dashing, we're running the ball. I was like, wow. So it is possible. And then, of course, kid throws picks in the red zone again and your fate is doomed. You cannot win. If you're erratic at that position, right? I don't care what you say. The guy could be the nicest person on earth. It's not going to work. Correct. So doc, uh, I can't think of a more fitting way for Ron's quarterback saga to end than the way it happened, the way it transpired late last week with Sam being shown the bench, you know, get the mental reset, take a break, watch the veteran Jacoby, you know, take over against the Niners and then Jacoby has a hamstring injury. The, he tries to go right up until the end at the warm-up during the game. He can't go. And then Sam, after being told, basically, look, you're not good enough. You're not playing well enough to start against the Niners. They have to turn to him to start against the Niners. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just a, a clown show. I mean, there's just no way he was mentally ready for that, I wouldn't think. Well, but I think I learned and gained even a deeper respect for Sam. Yeah. He didn't fall apart. In other words, he's not shot. Yeah. He's not. You can't go in and and he made some throws, man. That back shoulder to Scary. Scary was involved. Mm-hmm. But the whole thing to me is that it's the eight car. And when you see the battering ram, I, I'm look I couldn't believe my eyes. And it was like maybe if we got another fourth and an inch again Maybe we wouldn't be in shotgun and trying to create some magic. We would have just slammed the ball in there. And Trent Scott, I'm going, 
You mean that dude was on the bench all year? Hmm. And he's up against Bosa? And he doesn't get his head knocked off? He plays the entire game? Really? Yeah. I'm telling you, I cannot wait for that gun to go off after the Dallas Cowboy game. Hey, Doc, I was talking with Jason about this earlier. I mm-hmm. I can't believe the drop-off in Dotson's involvement in the offense. Now, he had a stretch mid-season, like late October, where he was targeted 8, 10, and 8 times in three consecutive games. But after that, he just has not been a part of the offense. Have you heard about any sort of friction between him and and the enemy or between no. between him and how like I, I don't understand what's no. going on with his lack of involvement there have you heard his anything his personality doesn't seem to me he he doesn't have that in him i know, I know seems like a mature kid just seem like divas and yeah. jackasses but this guy just a good dude and i don't know how you can judge anything when you're e- erratic at that position mm-hmm. and if it's not him then again they're coming out a dime a dozen now to college you can get receivers at 7-Eleven. I wouldn't even be concerned. What I'm concerned about is can we block people? And they showed you they could. <clears throat> and we'll never know what would have happened with Brissett. And that's the beauty about the, our little saga. We're never going to know. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and and again, we'll chase all offseason, well, maybe a little bit of it, about was that an inside job? And I'll have the utmost respect for our new ownership group if they pulled it off, but we won't get that now. It'll happen in a couple of weeks from now, months from now, but that'll be interesting. And then the Cowboy game, what what's going to happen? Who's yeah. going to play? Is Brissett going to go or is it going to be Sam? I have no idea. That's the whole part yeah. why it's kind of gives us a little more meat on the bone all week because if not, then it's just the same old blah, 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 and who's listening? I'm not. What do you think is going on um, – in the locker room with those guys. I mean, they obviously want Last the season. Game, they they well, want the season playing. to end quickly, but. Yeah. Well, you how- just can't wait to get over. You can't play half behind, even though your results may look like it. You got to go. And they did. And that's why, I mean, I built my whole, the post game off. I gave, You gave me a half. Thank God. Thank you. Because mm-hmm. I was getting nothing. Now I got a half. And so at least I could see something that I was proud of. They were competitive against a team I respect. And then it shows you even more so, oh, so you're capable of doing it. You're just not motivated to do it every week or on demand. I mean, they they actually didn't appear to be flat. There was energy. They were bouncing around. I mean, even though they looked like clowns in them cranberry outfits they got on, but still, (laughs) you know, it just, I just can't wait for this to be over. I really can't. I mean, we laugh, and I laugh so I don't scream and holler. Mm-hmm. Yeah, an embarrassment <laughs> beyond. You can't imagine how embarrassed I am. Yeah, because, um, you know, just think about how much optimism there was to start oh, the year, man. right? It was phenomenal. I mean, Snyder's gone. You got the Josh. The bullpen was off the chain. Right, man. everyone's excited about <laughs> Sam, and yeah. they win those first couple games, and you think, all right. This this might be a, a decent year. Get to eight nine win. I never thought they were gonna get to nine wins, but a lot of people did. And then it, it was just a tank job. Well, I mean, when you uncover most scams, that's what it looks like. Uh-huh. You, you can't believe you were involved in it, but you were. Uh-huh. You got played. Yeah. They had a whole way. I, and um, and just but but you were out of, but, out but, of but, everything. Yeah. Big pardon. I was going to say, but for for most of the year when we had you on, you were still, all right, Sam's the guy. He can do it. He'll be the guy next year. Let's get some offensive linemen um, to protect yeah, but, him. Well, well, my eyes didn't lie, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, but, you're, see it. but you're thinking something different now. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. I, yeah, my eyes don't lie. Mm-hmm. I could love him to death. It could be my kid. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say, well, no, no, this is not going to work. Because I can't tell you why he doesn't get to throw the ball. I can't explain that. That's like having the yips. You're sitting there, guy's open, and to, that's why I can't murder Dotson because maybe he's been wide open. Mm-hmm. But if the guy doesn't throw you the ball, everybody killing. I don't like the run to, to pass ratio either. But you'll never know what EB was capable of because kid wouldn't throw the ball. 
And we thought the offensive line sucked. Well, it really didn't suck. The guy wouldn't throw the ball. And, Doc, and then he you know, comes out and he shows you he's got grit to start against the Niners and come out, play as well as he did early on. Yeah, okay. So this guy's an NFL player. The question is to what level and under what system. Yeah. And I don't think you can predict another man's system. You don't know who's going to be in charge of what. So we're just wasting time and breath by saying what's going to happen. We have no – well, I don't have any idea what's going to happen because I have no idea who's in charge. Correct. Hey, Doc, don't you think deep down it has to be killing the enemy that Brissett couldn't go for the entire game because in the in the short stints that he came in, he was yep. moving the offense well. And that's a small Would've sample size. And he was yeah, facing the Niners. Pick. <laughs> yeah. Possibly, but – but, but yeah. Bien, I mean, you know, he's going to be out of the market too. He's going to be out, yeah. you know, in front of owners and GMs trying to find yeah. either another offensive coordinator spot or a head coaching gig. Like yeah. he wants to showcase his offense, and the best spot, the best shot at doing that was with Brissett. I agree. Mm-hmm. I agree. And then Brissett, and then you know, we'll go over Hamstrake Gate, and we'll, you know, but I think both guys, I expect them to have a chance. I would love to see them in a competition. The question is, with whom? Right. And that's one of these kids coming out. We blow smoke up, up these kids every year. And there'll be there'll be maybe one that'll be special. And see, to me, what is special? Burrow is special. Mm-hmm. Everybody else is just a first-round pick. You know, and now what's the odds of getting Joe Burrow? That's what it is. Tua, Burrow. Maybe the kid in L.A. with the Chargers, maybe. I mean, he's a he's a seven on seven guy. Everybody blows smoke up this guy's vertebrae. And he's a seven on seven guy. Hmm. It's like the guy Allen in Buffalo. He's a seven on seven guy until he proves he can win. Then he's a quarterback. But, and like you're saying, but you have to take that chance. You just you have, have to. Now, I mean, based on it's history, based on history, yeah. it ain't great. I get it. I mean, look no, at, it's it's terrible. Right. That's why but you still I'm take glad that I don't have to make the decision. Yeah. Because there's no way in the world I don't leave there without the biggest human being on the on the planet. And I'd want to come home with two offensive linemen. That's how I feel right now. <clears throat> because in the end, what's the chances of the guy not being a bus? My odds are what would the Packers do? What would the real smart programs do? The legacy programs that have, they have had offensive line problems in 30 years. We got a problem. The guy's got record sacks, record picks. That's not good. Mm-mm. No, it's not good. And so you got to fix it in a way that gives you stability. Don't look at it as a team. Look at it as a company. <laughs> and as a company, which is absolutely pathetic. Hey, Doc, we were uh, you, you, you obviously listen. We were talking about David Tepper and him throwing a drink yep. on a fan. Like, yeah. how, how yeah. would you rate Harris as an owner in year one? I mean, look, he's owned sports teams before. He knows how to do this. He knows how operations run. And, look, he's, he's not out there throwing drinks on people. Like, <laughs> I know he's been criticized for maybe uh, chuckling too much up in the suite when his team's getting drilled on the field. I think that's a little overblown. But what are your views on Harris in year one? I just got to wait because um, I'm not happy with the last seven weeks of being, we're holding on. This is torture. Now, maybe it'll end up being the right way. Well, I'm not happy about this because we've been forced to hold steady and no damn well nothing's going to change. This group is incapable of fixing. So the strategy is yet to be seen. Just because it's new doesn't mean it's going to work. Mm-hmm. I need results. And you got one guy in the building that's got a different attitude, which is positive, and he's from Baltimore. Anything Raven-related, then you get my attention. Because they understand football. Mm-hmm. From a facility, from everything about football, they get it. And in my opinion, we don't. So they've impressed me in that deal. They impressed me at the bullpen. I like them. But what is it not? To, but but the results and me being tortured for seven weeks, I'm not pleased with. 
Uh, just kind of going around the league real quick. Um, you know, you got one game or one week left in the regular season. You got yep. eight, nine huge games with playoff scenarios, clinching scenarios, division title scenarios. Yeah. Um, Can't wait to see how you bet on this. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Well, <laughs> I'll, I'll have many wagers going. He's I a know. degenerate. Not a lot of money, no, but I'll have, I know wager. I'll have ma- I'll definitely have some wagers going. But um, <laughs> what what's more like? What's the most intriguing part of Week 18 for you? Just kind of bouncing around the league. Well, I'm just selfish, dude. I'm selfish, mm-hmm. so I only even care about things that relate to what could possibly be good for us. Right. So I look who turned it around in one year. Who's the quickest quick change artist available? So, because I don't want to hear this garbage again. Uh, we got a four-year. No, we ain't no damn four-year nothing. <laughs> because I'm seeing it flip now in one, flipped in two. I'm looking down at Houston. Mm-hmm. Oh, you can't win with a rookie. Oh, really? Yeah. So everything. So I'm for the so for the next used car salesman to come. And not not that there's anything against that. Some of my best friends <laughs> sell cars. <laughs> but what I'm saying to you is that. You can't scam me again. Right. Because it's been done now. I'm watching it. So all I care about is watching people joking Baker Mayfield, yet they're competitive. I'm looking for people that can get the job done and fix this, not just sell it, but actually fix it. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. Yeah, I'm not in a good mood. I'm never going to be, not be in a good mood yeah. <laughs> with this because we got when, scammed. When we talk to you again, at this time next week, you won't be in a good mood either because it'll be another commander's well, loss. Yeah, but you're yeah, – Yeah, but, I don't know. I but, don't know. But think we about it, with the number one pick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you're – I mean, look, the seasons obviously was lost weeks ago, but um, like you said, you, you now now you start thinking about, all right, who's going to lead the charge, right? Who's exactly. Gonna be, who's going to be the next yeah. guy in the front office? Who's going to be the next yeah. head coach? Who's going to be our next quarterback? So yeah. – um, we got to fix things, yep. and we got yep. some. But but, look at this first half against the Niners, blew me away. Really? Oh wow! So we can come out and look professional and be aggressive, have a mean streak. We can ground and pound. We do have a freak in the backfield. So oh oh okay, that's good to know. That's good to know. But like, like, but like you said, you got to do it for sixty minutes, yep, not thirty. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, you got to understand and accept the fact that that's how we win here. Mm-hmm. See, they were just playing the game. I want to win the game. Yeah. Doc, yeah, you we get run, paid man. just for playing. I want to win. <laughs> Doc, we love it, but we got to run. We'll talk to you All again right, next week, my friend. Have a good one. Doc. Good Doc luck Walker, with your best bets. Host of the Burgundy Eagles <laughs> post game show on one hundred six seven The Fan.